I have no respect for men or women that participate in friends with benefits or situationships or whatever. All of these men and women that know how to treat a man or know how to treat a woman and yet are cheating or hooking up or having somebody else on the side, like, that's not really how you treat a man. That's not really how you treat a woman, okay? In fact, I'm to the point to where I've completely accepted that I'm not going to have a family in this life. And I, I you know, at first I was really sad. I was really, I was really disappointed. When I began to really accept this, I was like, man, I accepted the emotions that were coming with it because for most of my life, that's all I've ever wanted was a family and a, a, a place to be and a place to call home. Like, who wouldn't want that, right? And that's all I've really wanted, but given the landscape of today's dating market, it's just an absolute insane cesspool. It really is. And I would say out of all the women that approach me now or that try to start a sexual relationship with me, out of all of the women, I would say 80% of them roughly are in relationships or married. And some of these women have even told me that we can keep it a secret. Now, I was not always the man that was the sexual stud that I am today, apparently. I never thought about myself as this way, but as soon as I started having self-respect, as soon as I was able to walk away, it's like all of a sudden these women just think I'm the best thing since sliced bread sometimes. Which is kind of ironic because that's not always the way it used to be. In fact, I was invisible to women most of my life. Up until I was about 24, 25 years old was when things started to change and I'm 28 now. And so I had a lot of experience with women over the past few years. And even though in my early 20s, I participated in a few one night stands and thank God I didn't try even more so than I already did because even after the first one, I was like, man, I feel so much more empty, but yet everybody else is doing it. So like, maybe, maybe I'm going to, maybe I'm just not understanding this, right? Like maybe I'm just not, I don't know what's going on with me. I thought I was the problem. I was convinced through society that I was the problem because I wanted to be pure. I didn't really care to just be with women. All, all, I didn't really care for it. Even though it seemed like that was the thing to do, right? Like, oh, well, you have your fun and then you settle down. It's fine. What we're not taught is all of the consequences that can come with that. And thank God that I didn't do anything more than I did and that I actually have been able to heal from those experiences and see the light at the end of the tunnel. And in, in some ways, the accepting that there's no possibility for family is my light at the end of the tunnel. I know that kind of sounds like uh, not, not really the light at the end of the tunnel. It kind of sounds a bit silly maybe to some people, but it's a bit dark. But it's actually not. It's actually liberating for me because for anybody that knows me and knows my channel and that has followed me for any amount of time knows that I'm a follower of Christ. I'm not Christian or anything like that. I don't condone religion. I think religion does do a lot more harm than good, but I think spirit and truth is what we're all really seeking after. And, you know, Satan is the the prince of this world and he wants us stuck in that mindset this is what was so crazy like i went against my own intuition and i went against my own instinct that was what was so bizarre in my younger years and i learned from it and i learned to listen to myself like this is just not what it seems like it is like people are saying that they have a good time but i feel worse but over the years and over the last few experiences that I've had with women, and when I guess I say few experiences, I really mean like 20 to 50 maybe, 
just talking stages and such, but it never really gets beyond that anymore. It really doesn't because I can either sense manipulation, I can sense that she's had a past, and I can sense that she's not actually being transparent. And I understand that the sexual nature of women is going to be deception to some degree, but as a follower of Christ, a few months ago, I guess it was about April or May, I was praying, and I was praying to God to, to get a wife, and to find a wife, and create a wife, and to create a family. Because at this point, I realized, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to find it, I'm going to have to create it, right? I'm not going to find this thing, I'm going to have to create it. But where do, where do I go? Because now, as the sexual stud that apparently I am, <laughs> I've seen both sides. I've seen me being invisible, and I've seen me on the other side where it's like all of the married women, if you really wanted to, and I, you know, I, I'm not that guy. But if I really wanted to, and if you really wanted to, if you were that sexual stud, you understand then, the side guy, let's say, you understand that if you just kept your mouth shut and you did what you did, nobody would know. Not a soul would know. Except for God. God would know. And the other person, of course. And, like, do you really want to be that guy? Like, do you want to be that guy that is on the side of a woman? Like, like the side man for a woman that has a family? Like, how do you not think about your, your, the way that you're disrespecting yourself and the other people involved? And the other man? Like, who, who do you think you are if you're doing that kind of thing? That kind of degeneracy is what destroyed the society in general. And in April, May this year, I realized as I was praying, I, I, I just kind of, it's not like I, I gave up. I just surrendered this, this desire for a wife. I surrendered this yearning for a wife. And as soon as I surrendered that desire, God told me, and I haven't, I've only told one other person this, and this person might be watching, so you know who you are. But God told me, and usually when God talks to me in prayer, he only tells me what not to do. He doesn't tell me necessarily what to do. He tells me what not to do. And he said, you are not to have a wife or family. When I heard that in my prayers, I was honestly devastated. And... I, I wept because I was so sad about having to realize that this is, the, this is gonna be what it is. Like, this is just the way that life is. But as I was weeping, I was still doing things. I was creating. I was, I was drawing an image. And after, because after the prayer, I was filled with this emotion. And usually whenever I have that kind of intense emotion, I need to do something like with it. I need to create with it. And so I was drawing an image and then I played the guitar a little bit as I was weeping. So I was still doing something as I was crying. I'm not just like crying just to cry. Okay, I, at least I'm doing something about it. And there were other times where throughout the next month or so, I would be going out on a run because I would feel those emotions again and I would just go out on a run and I'd have a little tear tear running down as I was running. And looking back, I can laugh about it just a few months, you know, in retrospect, because it feels in some ways like years, but it's only been a few months. And I remember like as I was running outside and just feeling these emotions, it was honestly healing for me. It was very healing. And it's not like I, it, it wasn't like I was hurt by anybody or anything. It was just the healing of, of Jesus was just so profound because I had created an ideal of what I thought my life could be like and I thought my life would be like. And it's like, who exactly placed that thought algorithm there, right? Who, why did I want to get married? Because I've heard, and probably the most, uh, one of the most uh, viewed videos on this channel is the video from a few months back in July 
called uh, Nearly All Married Men Tell Me Not to Get Married, and I knew this, and I've seen it, and yet I still wanted to get married for some reason. I still wanted to have a family, and I still do want to have a family. Absolutely, of course. But it's almost like I've accepted that in this life, it's entirely possible not to not to have a family, and God has commanded me to. And for a while, I thought it was just a test. I thought it was... I thought it was just a test that I, I'm i not going to have a family. Well, then maybe maybe I, tr I tried to do a little bit of wordplay with it. Like maybe the not to have a family, like tying the knot or something like that. Like maybe it's just you're not going to be able to not like get married and tie the knot, so to speak. Right. But that's not what it was. That's not what it was. What it was and what it is, is that. I am not to have a family. And that's just going to be what God has planned for me. And that's okay. I I still want a family, but I'm going to do what God has commanded me and I'm going to be obedient to that. And so the light at the end of the tunnel for me is yes, I'm accepting my desire for actually still wanting that family, but I've also accepted this commandment that God has given unto me and there's been more sanctification and in some ways redemption from the discipline and the obedience to God than there was and is in wanting to fulfill that fulfill that desire because I think it's only natural that people want a family but there are too many people in this world that are Christian or religious or Muslim or whatever, and they're cheating. They're like, how can you be a woman or a man that knows how to treat a woman or knows how to treat a man with a good head on their shoulders, quote unquote, and cheat and hook up? Like, this is, this is insane. This is absolutely nuts. And it's almost like God is telling me it's better for me to remain pure and close to him than to try to participate in the, in the creation of something. And I'm not telling anybody else, by the way. I'm not telling you that you shouldn't get married. I'm not telling you that you should get married. I'm just saying that this is where I'm at. And I'm not telling you guys to follow in my footsteps. I'm telling you to follow Jesus. Like I, That's what I'm preaching here. And God is telling me to do a certain thing. And I would like to see, you know, there, I would like to see more uh, families. I would like to see more people participate in the family unit. I'd like to see that there's something more being brought to this life and to this world. I want to see more families. I want to see more homes. But unfortunately, it, it seems like it's a pipe dream. It, it really does. And I don't like saying that, but at the same time, accepting that this is where we're at has brought me personally a lot of peace and a lot of understanding and accepting that I'm going to be me the rest of my life. And really, when you think about it, who is, who, like, when you get to the end of your life, anybody that's been around older people or the elderly, you see that regret in many ways is a part of life. I haven't met one elderly person that said, you know, oh, I don't regret a thing. Like, I don't regret anything. Like, And if they do say it, it's almost like they say it with trepidation and they're not really meaning it they're not really meaning it they're just trying to tell themselves that but the real ones will say yep I absolutely regret this but they accept that regret and they deal with it they deal with it they don't try to hide from it and so when I see the elderly with 
what they have left in their lives. It's, it's <laughs> when everything is said and done, it's just them looking back at their life. It's just them looking back. And that's really something to think about. So it's going to be you to think back, like that's going to be looking back as well someday. It's going to be you looking back. It's only you and God. Something to think about anyway. So with all that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And again, I still want to, I still believe in healthy, like strengthening healthy relationships. And I want to thank everybody that is participating in the Regal Change Academy, because that's exactly what we're doing there. We're helping people grow closer to God. We're helping people strengthen healthy relationships, building their fitness and building their brand and purpose. And if you want to join the free Discord channel, that link in the, is in the description box below. If you want to join the paid community, then you can check out the link in the description box below as well. I also want to thank everybody that's been moving over to X and Rumble recently. And with all that being said, peace be with you. Till next time.